Okay, uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about Venn diagrams. Sometimes the only thing people have remembered from their whatever previous exposure they may, may have had to sets is Venn diagrams, and somehow it, sometimes it feels like all of set theory is just about Venn diagrams. Um, in fact, they're pretty special, but they are very useful. And um, so let's, uh, let's talk about them a little bit. So um, Venn diagrams, the name comes from a, a guy named Venn, who in 1880 wrote a paper called On the Diagrammatic and Mechanical Representation of Propositions and Reasonings in the London, Edinburgh, and Dublin Philosophical Magazine and Journal of Science. And uh, you can get this online. It's been scanned. It's kind of fun to look at. It's a little small here, so I don't know how well you can see this. But if you, if you zoom in here, you can see that... Um, he says um, that he's interested in schemes of diagrammatic representations of logical treatises. And I don't want to go through this all, but I just wanted to just show you that, um, sure enough, he talks about how if you want to understand the relationship of three sets, X, Y, and Z, then you can draw a little picture. There's a little picture like this or like this. And these are what are called Venn diagrams. Um, so here's my not very nice picture of a Venn diagram. The idea behind a Venn diagram is that you represent a set of objects by one of these circles or maybe by some other squiggly shape. And uh, then you, by this graph, so in this case, I've drawn a set A in red and a set B in blue. And we can represent operations like union and intersection in terms of these circles. So for instance, we can think of this set over here, this region over here, as representing the elements, so this big blue thing here. These are the x's which belong to A, but not B. And that's what we would call A minus B. Um, so that's the idea behind a Venn diagram. Um, just similarly, this region in the middle, which I'll color in in green in there, these are the elements that are within A and within B. So the green region, these are the things that belong to A and B. And so the green region represents A intersect B. And as long as I'm doing this, let's put in one more color maybe this, uh, this gray color over here. And the gray color are the things in B but not in A. And um, so in some ways what we have here is a picture that shows us that A, oh, and maybe I should say A union B is all of it together. So uh, in some sense, what we've shown here is that A union B has three parts. It has A minus B, A intersect B, A minus B, which is over here, A intersect B, which is here, and B minus A, which is here. So uh, just to recap, a Venn diagram is a graphical representation of set operations. And like every diagram, it can be convenient to do some, you know, to help visualize what's going on or if you're trying to present something. But it's not by itself sufficient because, you know, it's a diagram. It's ambiguous. You have to include an explanation to explain what's happening in the diagram if you want it to be a, a complete answer to a question. So let's look at a couple of examples. One thing about Venn diagrams is as soon as you have more than three sets, it starts to get pretty tricky to draw. So let's look at the case of A union B intersect C. So we have three sets, and I'm going to draw them like this. Here's A, here's B, and here's C. And this is a standard way, and it accounts for all the possible things that can happen. It, we can have, so for instance, here, you are, let me label them. This is A, this is B, and this is C. So you have to label your diagram or you can't make any sense out of it. 
So for instance, if you're in here, you are in B and C. but not in A, okay? And if you're in here, you're in all three of them. And all the possibilities of where you can be are captured here. If you're out here, you're not in any of them. If you are in one of these circles, then you're in, in, the, um, in the corresponding part of A, B, or C. Just drawing this picture makes a lot of assumptions about how these things work. But let's, uh, let's not worry about that too much. Let's see if we can draw what X, A union B intersect, oops, what A union B intersect C looks like. So let's start with B intersect C. So if you're in B intersect C, that means you have to be in both B and C but there's no condition from A. So if you're here, you're in B, but you're not in C, so that's no good. And if you're here, you're in C, but you're not in B, so that's no good. But if you're here, you're in both B and C. So these, set, these points here are okay. They're in B intersect C. And actually, so are these points over here, because although they're in A, we don't care about A, they're also in both B and C. These points here, they're no good, because although they're in B, they're not in C, they are in A. And these points, these points here, they're in B and A, but not in C. And these points here are in A and C, but not in B. So we've colored in B intersect C here. Now let's add A union that. So when you take the union, you're going to take a A, whoops, A union B intersect C means A X is in A or X is in B intersect C. So we need to add to our picture everything which is in A or in B intersect C. So we've already drawn B intersect C. But if we want to include everything which is in A, we have to include the whole circle for A. Because everything that's in A is in A union B intersect C. So we get this funny looking picture here. It, uh, it has all of A and then it has this part sticking out that comes from B intersect C. Here's a little bit trickier one. A union B intersect A union C. So I'm going to draw the three circles again. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. It's not really a circle, it's kind of a weird shape. And um, let's start with A union B. So A union B are the points that are in either A or B. So this region here is in A, so it's in A union B. So remember that A union B, these are the set of X for which X is in A or X is in B. So this region here is in A, this region here is in B, this region here is in both A and B, this region here is in both A and B, this region here is in A, and this region here is in B. So all of the regions that have an orange dot in them are in A union B. What about A union C? That's, let's use a different color for A union C. How about um, green? So A union C, this is the set of X for which X is in A or X is in C. Get a, it's a green dot. So this region gets a green dot because it's in A this region gets a green dot because it's in A. This region gets a green dot because it's in A. This region gets a green dot because it's in A. This region gets a green dot because it's in C. It's not in A, but it's in C. And finally, this region gets a green dot because it's in C. Okay. So I think 
that, uh, that covers these two things separately. Now, what about the intersection? Well, the intersection is going to be anything which has both an orange and a green dot, because you have to be in both sets to be in the intersection. And that means that we have to include this region, because it has an orange and a green dot, this region, this region, this region, and this region. And if you look at this picture and you think about what we did the last time, here's the picture from before. Here's this picture. You see that the pictures for A union B intersect A union C and the picture for A union B intersect C look the same. So in fact, what we have here is a kind of a pictorial evidence that A union B intersect A union C equals A union B intersect C, which is a kind of a distributive law, right? I mean, A union B intersect C converts to A union B intersect A union C. And that's true, and, and this picture certainly seems to uh, suggest that very strongly. If we wanted to actually settle this definitively, we would need to be more careful. We would need to go case by case and check systematically what's going on. We will have a chance to do that later on in the course, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, but at least from the pictures, you can see why uh, you would have reason to believe that this might be true. All right. Let's look at one more. Um, so now we have our triple A union A, B, C picture. Here's A, here's B, and here's C. And we want to color in A minus B union C. We want to draw a picture of that. So let's start with A minus B. So A minus B are the points x in A, but not in B. So anything over here, x is in this region, is in A. This region is in A. This region is in A, but it's in B. This region's in A, but it's not in B. This region's in A, but it's in B. So I think the red dots here cover the regions where you're in A, but you're not in and now if you want to take the union of that with C, you have to include anything which is in C as well. So either X is in C or X is in A minus B. Well, let's use a different color for X being in C. We'll use green. So this is in C. And this is in C. And this is in C. And this is in C. But now we're interested in the union. So if you have a green or red dot, or red dot, because the union sign means either. So in the last example, you needed to have both dots to be in. Here you just need to have one dot or the other. So A union B intersect C is this region here. and this region here, and this region here, and this region up there. So the only parts which are missing are here, and this, this region down here is missing because um, it's not in C, right? And it's in A and B, and so it's not in A minus B. And this region is missing because it's not in C, and it's not in A. So that seems believable. So in these examples we've looked at, we've only considered the case of three circles. What do you do if you have four sets? And this turns out to be a little, kind of tricky. Um, artistically, it's a challenge for me. So I, I picked this example from the web as a way that you might think that you could draw four circles. But if you stare at this for a little while, you realize there's a problem 
because, for example, where is D intersect B? Certainly, if you have four sets, uh, it could you, you need to be able to account for the fact that, that you could have D intersect B. But in this picture, D, whenever D meets B, it also includes some of C. So here you have, this is the place where D and B intersect, but they also include C. That's here. And you also have D and A intersect, B and uh, D intersecting, but you also include A. You don't ever have D intersecting B by itself. And in fact, you can, you can show that you can't make a Venn diagram that accounts for all the possible intersections of four sets um, with four circles. Uh, and this, turn, this maybe is a little bit surprising, and it, it would take us too far afield right now to see why that's true, but you can still draw a, um, a picture that'll get you the four sets, but you can't use circles anymore. You have to use ellipses. So in this picture, um, let's just see. So you see here we have, remember before the problem was we didn't have B intersect D. And now here we have B, and here we have B intersecting D. And one way to check this is if you think about, you have A, B, C, and D are the four sets, um, and you're interested in the intersections, the question is, you mean, can you find the intersection of any subset of A, B, C, and D? So we know that there are 16 possible subsets of the set A, B, C, D, and each such subset gives us an intersection. So the subset, for instance, A, B, corresponds to A intersect B. So we would need to have 16 regions to account for all of these possible intersections. And, let, and now let's count them. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Where's the 16th? Well, remember that one possibility is that you might have the subset consisting of the empty set, which would be the intersection of none of these sets. And that's this region out here. Here's 16. So um, this diagram does include all the 16 possible intersections. And from this, you could come up with a Venn diagram that would allow you to do computation with four sets. Um, if you want to get up to higher numbers, it gets even more complicated. Um, and uh, if you wanted to pursue this, uh, you could uh, get in touch with me and, and we could talk about some of the ideas that go into this.